Our Freaks Electric, Richard Eccles, Sugar Babes on XFM 104.9, Steve. Absolutely. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hello. Carl, the, uh, the producer. Seven minutes past one of a Saturday, and what a lovely Saturday it is. It is indeed. By, well, it, it looks nice and bright, but it's deceptive, because I went out, and I just had a t-shirt on, and I had my jumper on me. I got out there, and I thought, this is chilly. <laughs> I, had pop, I had to pop the jumper on. Oh, no. So, uh, you good. know, just be good. If, you, if you're just, uh, you know, looking out the window thinking, I'll, I'll go outside, pop a jumper on, or, or, or a jacket, because it looks nice, but it is a little bit colder than it looks. Rick, can I ask, were you wearing the jumper around your waist, tied with a knot, or did you have it over your shoulders, like maybe I, you just jumped off a yacht. I popped it round my waist, and I'll tell you why. Okay. I tucked my t-shirt in for neatness and comfort. Lovely. But I know, even I know that's a little bit dorky, so sure. I was trying to hide the belt line. Okay, okay. So, okay. Uh, then I popped the jumper on, didn't have to worry about it. Did so you now go with the double gone. knot? I didn't, I did, uh, uh, Because that can loosen if you're not careful, especially if you're carrying bags or you're busy on the tube. I know, but I wouldn't mind that, as long as I didn't lose it. As long as I saw it loosen and fall, like, <laughs> okay. I'd pick it up. And you'd then, be uh, if you and then clean it. Not in the uh, washing machine though. Go just on. I'd pop it in a cold wash soak, right, okay. and then leave it out on a few towels or something, or pop it over the radiator. So what's the problem with uh, putting it in a hot wash? Well, it can cause shrinkage. <laughs> oh no! So uh, <laughs> coming up, we've got lo loads of tunes. We're going to be playing um, some of the best bands around, some uh, some new ones, some old ones. Might even play some um, uh, Adamant. We don't know yet. <laughs> Let's have uh, Badly Drawn Boy though, shall we? Come on. Current single. <laughs> Badly drawn boy there, silent sigh. Is that the one with the duck? That video? Yes, very yeah. good video. Apparently he stopped wearing his hat around because he keeps getting recognised. And he's going to not wear his hat when he doesn't want to get recognised. Okay. Maybe pop it in the wash. Mm. Mm. Mean, be careful, let's just have a kind of a light cold well, rinse. Well, yeah, light cold rinse, soak it, right, because yeah. it's woollen, right, mm. and then just leave it out on a towel. Or, you know, maybe in, mm. in, uh, no, near the immersion heater. Sure. Or over a radiator. Well, what, or even the radiator, is that a problem? It can <laughs> cause that sort of, you know, <laughs> damaging to okay. the fibres of the wall. He had, well, a he had a kid last week. Did he? Yeah. Who did? Badly drawn boy. Oh, right, okay. Dad Badly drawn little boy, he's yeah. gonna call it. Isn't he? Brilliant, Rick. Yeah. Well done. It's a sort of satire. Mm. I'd like to see that as a headline in a tabloid. And deliver, oi, oi, money, you, your life. <laughs> oh. Um, now, <laughs> going out. Oh, Carl, can we don't explain panic. why that's funny? Don't panic, Carl. I'm a professional. Don't worry. What's your concern, Carl? What's your concern? Nothing. Tell us. <laughs> no. You can say. No, you I can can't. You can. This is so unprofessional. It's. What? What? What have we done? What, talking about wool? No. <laughs> Come on, Carl, what's the problem? What's the problem? You say. <laughs> He's great, and he? He's lovely. so scared. Um, Come on, Carl, what's tell us? I don't know all the ins and outs, so I don't want to get into it. What? The thing. No, well, you look, can... you can't, look, people are perplexed now. What's the, what's the thing, Carl? What's the thing? What are you worried about? Say. Is it, is it an email? That's been received by the head of yeah, XFM? Yeah, you've, you've got the email open. You, you can talk room. about it, you can say what it is. Okay, yeah, let me just without, without, I don't understand it. Please know that under... Uh, under a ruling at the Old Bailey, any reference yeah. to Adamant's state of mental illness in any news report will constitute a breach of the ruling and therefore lead to serious action from his lawyers. That's right, and that's true. Subject, we can't, we can't talk about that. You can play his records and sing his classic sing, songs. Sing songs. Yeah, it's best just to leave it, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's what. We, yeah, Carl was a little bit worried. There's no way I was going to mention that or influence anything, and I totally agree with the law. So don't, don't panic, Carl. That should have never been sent to you. <laughs> <laughs> why? Because it's like you know, accidents happen. Go when, on then. when things like that happen, right? You know, you've been told not to mention it. Yeah. And you're like a little kid. Yeah. And and once things are in your head. Yeah. It's difficult not to mention it. I mean, when uh, <laughs> when I was a kid. Yeah. Go on. Right. <laughs> me uh, <laughs> my ma mum's sister Hazel. Right. Was, was seeing another bloke. <laughs> um, it's weird because she's a lesbian now. <laughs> <laughs> That's really weird. <laughs> that must have been an interesting Christmas. But anyway. <laughs> But anyway, she was seeing this bloke, and it looked like Ken Dodd, apparently. He looked like Ken Dodd. It looked like Ken Dodd. So people said, "Don't mention it because it gets it gets on his nerves when you when you like meet him and you go, oh god, you look like Ken Dodd." So I said, "All right, his name is Will or whatever." And uh, I was introduced to him. First thing I said, "Nice to meet you, Ken." <laughs> <laughs> did you do it as a joke, or did you? No, no, because you know when you know, that he's like, I'm not allowed to say that. I can't yeah. say that. I can't, mustn't say that. Can't. And then yeah. I saw him. I thought, Jesus, it does look like him. <laughs> yeah. just came out. <laughs> was it Doddy? You turned her into a lesbo? Do you think? Well, he wasn't a good-looking bloke. So, yeah. 
Possibly. She started going out with Esther Ransom, though. <laughs> which is which is weird, out of the frying pan. What was the story with the lesbianism, then? Did, 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 how did she announce that to everyone? What um, age was she when she realised? Well, we, we, I mean, we're not a close family, do you know what I mean? We're not no. a family who keeps in touch with everyone. And I think my mum called her up one Christmas and sort of said, you know, how's... How's, how's the Diddy Will? men? <laughs> yeah, how's and, Nutty uh, Ash? And yeah. she said, oh, no, I'm not, I don't do that anymore. Um, I'm knocking about with Sandra or whatever. Right. And it was like, oh, right. Not big butch Sandra with the big earrings and the skinhead. <laughs> used to live down the road from you. I, I don't know. Used I to get met. Doc Martens wholesale. That's Sandra. <laughs> but but she lived, she had a haunted house. Go on. Um, <laughs> Who's Sandra? No, Hazel. Right. This, is this before she was a lesbian or not? Before. Okay. And um, there was a bike in the hall and the pedals used to go back. <laughs> there was a what in the hall? <laughs> a bike. <laughs> <laughs> that's handy, isn't it? <laughs> oh, okay. that's great. Don't worry, we won't do, do anything. So, th sorry, no, there was. I want to know about the haunted house. There was mm. a bike in the hall, and what There was happened? a bike in the hall, and the pedals used to go backwards on their own, and also shoes used to stick to the wall or something. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> shoes used to stick to the wall? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That sounds like a. That's a haunted house. A, 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 a household. Yeah. Well, oh, dear. Go. Brilliant. Maybe she should clean the walls. Oh, I love this one. Lars, and there she goes. What a great start to a show. We've had, we've had 20 minutes of some of the, the best banter, chatter and music and anecdote anywhere on the dial. You're damn right. High five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sweet man, sweet man. Oh, uh, what are we talking about? Um, now, oh, oh, well, I, I love that track. It's lovely. I, I, they've got a bit of the, the Liverpool gene pool, haven't they? That sort of doddy. You know what I mean? I like the Scouse sort of look, you know, the Scylla Black and the Stan Boardman. Yeah, it's, it's sort of, particularly it's sort of, unique it's, to Liverpool. It's sort it? of happy and teeth and ears. And, <laughs> it's you know happy I mean? and teeth and ears. Yeah. <laughs> what a brilliant yeah. description. Yeah. Happy and teeth and ears. <laughs> yeah, that's just three of my <laughs> friends. <Yeah. laughs> now, we've got a great track lined up, haven't we, Carl, that I've brought in? So I'm going to go off. Now, I'm not ashamed. As you know, me and Steve aren't worried about being part of a trend or, or you know, being trendy or jumping on the back. Steve particularly doesn't worry about, like, looking good or, well, you know. Uh, no, no, I'm saying. No, I, as a compliment, you don't, it, it doesn't worry about walking along like that or, you know. Well, like, is, like a, I'm looking good. No, no, no. no good but I'm saying you don't mind the insults freak boy or goggle eye or. Uh, swore off a duck's back, mate. Do you know what I mean? Or, or a new phrase that's been coined because of Steve's phrase, water off a frog's back. Who's saying that? Well, just a lot of, lot, a, lot, a lot of your, what? a lot of friends and that. But I mean. Well, my friends? Yeah. A lot of, uh. A lot of the people. Yeah, you, can you, you name names or? I, I can't really. No promises. You can't. I, I can't. I can't really. Anyone up. I, I think it's the cagoule. Looks good. It does look. It's good. waterproof, Rick, and it's also stylish. I wear nothing underneath, so it's tight oh. to the skin. It gets sticky oh, in weather. That, yeah. Is that why you sort of it's rustle? Sexy. But what's so what's what's all the? Is there abuse? What's the no, no. They just say because I'm a pretty trendy guy. But I, I, as you say, I cut my own trend. You know, I make my own style. You know that. Consequently, the pipe. You don't feel that's an affectation. I, I don't think, I think because you're young and tall, yeah. the pipe looks a little bit silly. Go on. I mean, I know you're, wor you're worried about, because we've already lost the trilby. Well, I'm worried because pipes are going to die out. I mean, this is the problem, that there's no young people now who are taking up the pipe as a smoking device. Is there's there no anyone, young people. is there anyone under the age of, what should we say, Oh, we've said this 25? before, and I don't think there was, there was no one. I think there was some nutty old woman who phoned in and said, I smoke a pipe. But yeah. I'm talking about, you know, because years ago it was like an Oxbridge student, you know, you'd be at Cambridge or something, you'd have a, a lovely pipe, you know, a tweed suit, you'd be there studying. That was, you know, and that was the young gen always smoked a pipe, but no one is now. I, I tell you this, in the year 2050, there'll be no pipes. They won't exist. Well, I think all all um, drugs like uh, nicotine and alcohol will be banned, and we won't uh, we won't be allowed to think our own thoughts. We'll have to live in the sewers, like eating rat burgers That's or true something, enough. won't we? Yeah. And it will have to download our memories or something. Oh probably. God! And I, I, but I'll be a rebel, Rick. I'll just no, be down there listening to jazz. No, you won't. Yeah. You'll, you'll just have a little chip in the back, and you'll be you'll be going out with a big fat man with a big toga on, and there'll be and you'll be you'll be touching him. But well, I think he's a beautiful woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you will. Yeah. yeah, and I'll be fighting with the. The Rebel Underground. No, you won't. I will. No. I will. I'll you, be dead, won't I? <laughs> you'll be dead, yeah. I'll be dead, yeah. In 2050, you will. I'll be dead. Unless you, because obviously you're becoming quite wealthy now. You're becoming a very rich man, obviously, from all your, you know, I'll celebrity have brain, endorsements. I'll have my brain put into a robot. <laughs> exactly. Made of titanium, and yeah. I'll have it, oh. Would you it, be cryogenically frozen if you could do it? I would, but I'd leave myself out on a towel. <laughs> right. Never, because if you do it too quickly, you, there is shrinkage. You've got to be careful. Did you read in the paper this week? This is true. Apparently, the, um, the world's oldest man, who's 113, lives in some little part of Japan. Sure. Like little island in Japan. Yeah. But apparently, the world's oldest woman also lives in exactly the same place. Now, I don't know if she's since died, but she lived in the same place as well. Do you not think there's something suspicious going on there? 
I mean, isn't that a bit eerie to I'm, you? I'm thinking, have you ever seen them together? <laughs> and have, has he ever, have you ever found lipstick in his bag? <laughs> I think that would be one and the same. I wonder if it's something like, you know, what, what, what brought Godzilla back? There's some kind of, there's oh, some antics no. over there. No, there, there might be, might they're sort of like, yeah. Although, just hearing like, some of Carl's stories about school, there's something going on there where he lives. Yeah. Did you say you did live near a sort of um, nuclear plant or something? I found out it wasn't a nuclear plant, it was a chemical plant. <laughs> My God. Yeah. Really? And is that, is that really true? What colour was the yeah. tap water in your area? It was better than it is in London. Right. Really? I was talking to someone about this the other day. Yeah? Um, <laughs> water in London's ropey. Um, and, and I use one of them water filters. Do you really? And the guy down in the office was saying it's a waste of time though, because they only work for a couple of water, like you fill your jug twice, and then the water's going through the same muck, isn't it? That's true enough. But so it's not, if it's not work. getting through, it's not getting through. No, if but it's, it's a filter, it doesn't matter, does it? Still not good, though. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Good point. So, you just, are you just throwing it away based on what that bloke said? <laughs> did, did he sell, he did he sell you another one that he had on yeah, him? Did a, he better, a better updated model. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Did he have a suit and a when big... When you say, like, he works here, was he actually hanging around outside? <laughs> yeah. Did, did he with have a, a suitcase with, with a lots cart. of these in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Can I just go back to insults briefly? Go on, You know, you're saying... Oh, oh no no I, uh, see that goofy that's no, not no no fair. no because that's that's what he said it's in my head. I, what I, do you mean he said? No, when did he no, say that? No, I mean when did you call me goofy? No, he didn't. I he didn't. said about once in my head. Hey, no, when it's come on, come off it. Don't what? Start Who's calling me goofy? No, I'm not even goofy. No. Goggle eyes, fair enough. No, yeah, but you can no. sort your account. I can't. What yeah. do you mean I can? How can I sort my look at? I'm not even goofy. You've that's got, not fair. You've got the proper features. What? Just needs sorting out a bit. I can't help it if if my hair's not good. I noticed the other day when Carl was sitting on your knee having his picture taken. Yeah. It's a long story, right? <laughs> yeah. He's got a completely spherical head. It's slightly too small. I'm not being funny because I mean, you know, I'm not perfect. <laughs> 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 but he's got a completely spherical little head. He looks a little bit like a baby hamburger. You know, hamburger off um, uh, McDonald's. Sure. He looks like a little baby hamburger, and it's sort of quite put upon. It's S Suzanne thinks I look like that thing in that. Julex advert, you know when the woman pulls the head off that? <laughs> that little plasticine yeah, morph type and then they make a new ad for it. And it's like a little ad. <laughs> really? And that's your girlfriend saying it. I know. Anyway, listen, let's, let's get back to uh, uh, business here. This is uh, a great track. It's America by Simon and Garfunkel. This is where I started saying we don't care about being trendy and all that. That was it. <laughs> Strokes, last night, XFM 104.9, we're flying now, 35 minutes into it, no <laughs> real, no real hiccups, I don't think that not I- Not so far. And that, oh, it's just going really well, my name's Ricky Gervais, with me Steve. Hello there. Carl. Alright. All right. Coming up soon, white van man, white van Carl, we ask Carl the questions that the son asked someone else. <laughs> exactly. This is a good feature. It's a great feature. I'll be testing Carl on the new, the, the new re-education of Carl, as you know, he got a GCSE. It's the last one, isn't it? It's in weird. history. It was the last heavy sort of one, yeah. No. And so Winston Churchill. Well, yeah, because we've got, we got, we're going on to more sort of uh, metaphorical and metaphysical uh, sort of uh, pursuits, aren't we? Not that book. Yeah, that's the uh, Aesop's Fables. I can't fables. read that in a week. You don't have to read oh, it. Right, just choose out, right. just choose the ones about the foxes eating penguins. You'll like that. Steve, over to you. <laughs> Thanks very much. I wonder if I don't think we've uh, made much progress yet on uh, sending Carl into sort of uh, into the air with the. No, balloons. this has gone a bit ballistic. I've actually, gone off the idea. Uh, oh no, shut no, up! No, don't you? Haven't gone but off the, 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 we've 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 inflamed the imagination of the capital. There's people offering left, right, and centre, and uh, I think it's a good idea. But I think we we should we should uh, you know make a day of it. I think we should send you up in some balloons, right? Maybe. Uh, you know. I well, could, hang on. I, I, let's, I before we carry on, show. let's explain what happened because people might not have listened last week. I don't believe that. <laughs> there are one or two, Rick. I don't believe that. People who were Name ill, them. maybe out of the country. Okay. Um, yeah, so last week we discovered, was it that 623, uh, is it 6,000? No, I read that 6,000 balloons filled with helium can lift a bloke off the floor. I think that's too many. I think that's too many. I think we could do it for less, certainly. Well, anyway, you. listen, there are various <laughs> organisations which actually exist already that can provide this kind of entertainment, this kind of fun. I mean, I didn't realise there was a whole kind of market for this already, but apparently there Nor is. Nor did I, no. Incredible. Anyway, um, so we're going to try and track one of them down. We're going to see if they can, they can uh, organise it so that you, Carl, can float into the air. We need to get you, what, is it at least 11 feet up? 
Yeah, if it's just and I think certainly higher. I mean, I can't remember what the record is, but it's quite a long way. Eleven thousand, eleven thousand feet. Yeah, but I think they're all official. We're, I want to do it with like little those little balloons you get for a quid at the zoo. Or I don't somewhere. think that can be right, health and safety wise. I don't think that can be healthy. I, just, I, I, I think as we, if we get him to sign something, which I will. Okay. Uh, I think we'll cover our we'll sounds. But yeah, certainly we're thinking of maybe making it a bit like um, was it is it tea in the park. The, yeah, you know, capital FM. Uh, yeah, event, the, you know, the big event. You get sort of steps. At least H from Steps can come down and yeah. host the event. I mean, oh, oh, I don't mind uh, comparing it. Steve's going to do. Uh, Steve's learning to sort of like scratch and mix and beat match, and he's. I mean, you're getting pretty. I'm making a lot of progress. Yeah, I'm you're, 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 you are going to be a turntablist. Uh, yeah. Um, but Steve never learnt an instrument, which he regrets. You know, and uh, mm-hmm. you know he's a modern lad, and uh, he's uh, he's using t- uh, turntables as his instrument. I just I got two turntables and a microphone, and so far, I mean, that's, seriously, I'm cutting out big style. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't don't laugh because it is mental. The kind of stuff I'm coming out with, and I'm scratching. I've got I've got the, the beats, you know, matching. Can you imagine that? Shut up! It's that. No, no. no if, if look at the Chemical Brothers, for goodness sake! If you're talking about freaks, look at those weirdos. <laughs> Man alive! <laughs> at least you cut your hair at Gavin. You know that the whatever least, it's called. Uh, they used to kind of at least faintly appear in their videos. The yeah. next one is just some shots of like what you see from outside a train. I that know. Is, to them, that is more glamorous and exciting apparently than yeah. seeing the lads themselves in the video. Who do you think's cooler to look at, Steve or the Chemical Brothers? Steve. Definitely, yes. You're absolutely right, Carl. And that's the first sensible thing you've said if, for a long time. If I was time. to work with Steve on on some music, yeah. If I had the choice, I think Steve would look better on a album cover. Really? Yeah. What would you do? Would you change him at all? To, what would you do with his I'd, image? I'd put him in the distance so I... <laughs> I can't believe this is... This no, is just happening. so you don't look as tall, that's doing you a favour. <laughs> you know, I was on the... This is true, I was on the, uh, uh. on the tube, right, coming in to meet Gervais the other day, and I was wearing a suit and I, my mobile phone slipped out of my pocket and it landed on the seat, and I didn't realise this, and as I was about to get off, some bloke who was sat there, like an old guy, he picked up the phone and he went, Oi! Uh, lanky, you dropped your mobile phone. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, I thank you for pointing out I dropped my phone, but did you have to do the lanky? But you knew who he meant. I bet you turned round straight away. <laughs> it worked. You knew he meant, yeah, Steve. But <laughs> he's done you again. But I was the only up. person stood up. It was a fairly empty train. Was, was there any other lanky people there? No. Well then. No, but my point was there was no one else at all who was about to exit the train. Okay, so he didn't need lanky. He could have got excuse me, sir, or oi you, anything, but oi lanky. I know. It's that thing though, isn't it? That's what I'm talking about. You say the thing that you don't want to say. It's like me with Ken Dodd and Will. I think he wanted to say this. Oh well. <laughs> I think he took pleasure in it. <laughs> I think he went, that bloke's lanky. I shouldn't say that. Yeah, I should. <laughs> Oi, lanky. What's he, he going to do? Phone. Yeah. Do you I want think... your phone back or not? But this balloon thing, anyway, I, I, it's got a bit out of hand. Why no. is it got out of hand? What are no, you it's about? funny. I just want to, I want, you know, you know I want to sort of like tie them all to the back of your belt. So as you go up there, you sort of tip forward <laughs> slightly. So yeah. you're going up slightly upside down. We could paint some advertising on your bald head. On your, yeah, oh, that'd be great. Yeah, we'll do that, lanky. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be great. Here he comes. No, I mean, Last week it was just a bit of fun about going like just lifting my feet off the ground. No, and that's a big difference to what it's got now. No, okay, well, I will tell you what, we will do a hundred feet in the air, and we and I'll hold on to the rope. But we'll do it at Wembley Arena. We'll sell tickets. <laughs> but it'll be for charity, Carl. No, it'll be for charity. Fair. No, we'll have lots of underprivileged kids coming along to see it's it. You just know, going out of hand. it's like, um, you know, I, I like karaoke, <laughs> but I won't want to go on stars in their eyes. Sure. And it's it's got out of hand. That's how it's sort of it's grown too big. I don't. Who like would you it. do if you're on Stars and Rally? I do that. Uh, Moby. Ja- no, that Jack the Knife song. I love Jack that. the Knife. <laughs> Old Mac oh, Heath. Yeah. That one, yeah. yeah. It's Mac the Knife. That's what I do. <laughs> but which who? Which, which, <laughs> he'd, he'd do a hip hop version. <laughs> but which of the many singers would you impersonate? You can't. It's not the song, is it? It's, it's uh, the singer. You could do um, Jimmy Somerville, I think, quite well. Yeah, Somerville, you'd be uh, good at. Moby. Um, did Morph bring out a single? I don't think Morph did. Didn't he? No, I'm not sure. I'm sure, didn't he have so. a theme tune, did Morph? Phone in if you think Morph... Morph didn't speak, Rick. Let didn't him he? sing. Morph hardly had any features. True. Right. <laughs> Express 2 featuring David Byrne, Lazy, XFM 104.9. Quarter to two. I'm Ricky Gervais. Steve's got the sun. Yes, I'm He's sure. Gonna, we're white just going to be doing Van White Van Carl, where we ask Carl the questions the sun asked some other bloke. That's right. Because okay. we think Carl's got more to say than anyone on anything. Carl only tells the truth, by the way. Just 
remember that, listeners. Off you go. Yes, um, well, today's white van man in the sun is John Slade. He owns his own door maintenance company. <laughs> um, his, uh, his answers are very informative, I have to say. But, Carl, what do you make of uh, the Channel 4 producer, aged 30, who duped a school into believing he was a teenager for a documentary? Are you familiar with this story? No, go on. Well, basically, a 30-year-old guy kind of fooled the school into, um, into thinking he was a pupil for a, a secret documentary. The school's outraged. Do you think that that's, uh, you know, any, for you, you know, should anything go when it comes well, to making TV? I think I've said to you before, um, there's loads of kids at my school. I remember being in the first year, and kids who, what did, what year do schools go up to? <laughs> I was in the first year, what, what is it? Eleven. Five. Oh, sorry, first year of infants and juniors. No, secondary school. Eleven. Right, year eleven. Um, kids no. have beards and no, stuff. No, not year eleven. They're 11 when they first go to secondary no, school. No, right, well, I'm 11. The kid's at the, uh, at the older well, end. Well, there's a well, fifth form, and then there's right. a You can, leave when, you, you can right. leave when you're 16, I think, can't you now? Right, well, kids who were 16 yeah. looked old. They, had, they, they did have beards. I remember going there and thinking some of them were teachers. I think he's answered that. Next one, what's the next <laughs> yep. one? Tattoos and everything. Um, I think uh, they had kids in the, in the earlier years, even. What do you make of the fact that Mariah Carey's £38 million payoff has cost EMI staff... Uh, their jobs, and we're talking 1,800 EMI staff who have lost their jobs. What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean... I mean, is that silly money, Mariah Carey, on 38 million? She doesn't need that much. She doesn't need that much. <laughs> she has to dress nice, though. It's not her fault. I'd say, um, <laughs> it's bad business. Okay. Because, uh, EMI, did you say? Yes. Right. They've got rid of them, them staff. Yeah. Mariah Carey's left. Who's going to do the work? <laughs> you, think, do you think Mariah should come back and do some temping? Well, they should have. They should have got a loan and paid her. Okay. Do you know what I mean, vicious circle that. Right. Have you have you done you've done a business degree or anything? Have you? You did commerce. Yeah. What, where did you do that? What did you do that? In school. I'd, I'd learn how to fill out a check, <laughs> pay a bill, and uh, I think I, I had a trip round Kellogg's. <laughs> Did you, uh, did you get, a, did you get an O level or did you see We oh, know he didn't. You know. know. <laughs> but was, uh, was there a commerce exam or was it just a division of can't maths? Remember. What did you fill out a was check? It a subset of it maths. It was an option. It was like, if you want to do it, you can. What do. was it? Fill, fill out, out a check, check fill pay, out a, bill, check, pay, pay a, bill, a bill, pay a bill, have a visit right now. I went down Kellogg's and I saw my sister's boyfriend there at the time. He sorted me out with some variety packs. Really? What was in them? You know, Rice Krispies and. <laughs> Good stuff. Cocoa Pops? Space dust or whatever it is. Space dust. So, sorry, that wasn't Ken Dodd, no. though. <laughs> that was someone else. Wasn't it? That was an aunt. Uh, yeah, yeah, that wasn't special K. Oh dear. What about this then? Home Secretary David Blunkett admits that muggers rule some streets. Um, weird this, because when I was out with you, I don't believe it's going to be weird. Whatever you say, no, Carl. No, when go we on. when we were in that pub that night and we got talking about muggers and that, the tip is, um, what I tend to do because I nearly got mugged once. Act you what? You nearly got mugged once. I nearly got mugged. Yeah. But I, but I tried this technique <laughs> of acting a bit mental. <laughs> right, and how did you act mental? Well, this guy wanted me trainers. And uh, I was in Piccadilly Gardens in Manchester. It was quite late one night. Mm -hmm. And he come up, he said, uh, I want them trainers. I said, you want them? I said, I worked hard for these. I said, how dare you come to me asking? And I, I got a bit livid. And I <laughs> He looked at he looked at me like oh my god he's got a right one here and he left me. Were you acting mental or were you just mental? No, I, I put it on a bit. Were you not petrified though? Well, you don't think about it, do you, when you're sort of in the eyes of danger? <laughs> well, not you. Clearly, you're a brave man. So what did the you say? I, ju I just I just I just went I just went a bit mad. I just kind of because he said he wanted the trainers and they were dear ones at the time, and uh, I just no, you're not having these. So I've crafted. You, I said I wanted these trainers, yeah. and you know went on to tell him how I work out printers and I don't enjoy it, and you know I put in all these hours and that, and I have to cycle home for about five miles. And I did he give you his trainers? <laughs> yeah. Did he have a knife? No, or I just think? left. No, it didn't get that. Didn't get that violent. Well, that's very brave of you, Carl. Yeah, it's that's good. good advice though. Just act mental. Um, uh, <laughs> See, what's it? Should he tried it the other night? Oh, Liza Minnelli. Yeah. Well, she says oh, well, I've worked hard for these diamonds. Yeah. It's not easy being the daughter of Judy Garland. You don't know what it's like. Uh, finally, uh, apparently um, there was a crook that got a job, a security job at Heathrow. Right, he was a crook and he got a job at Heathrow. Crook. Uh, as robbers steal another two million pounds. Apparently security down there is lax. Yeah. Is that a concern for you? Is this another Yeah. two million? Yeah. 
why why is all this money at the airport? <laughs> Um, it's those sandwich shops. You know how they're really expensive, the sandwiches, in like when you're yeah. on a plane. They're like £2.50 <laughs> for tuna, which is ludicrous. Yeah. That's basically the reason. What do you mean, why is all this money at airports? What What is it doing there? Why have a go, just... have a go. No, have a go answering this yourself. Why is anything at an airport? It's going somewhere. Or coming in from somewhere. Yeah, but money, you can sort it out through the bank, like phone banks and that. Have you done commerce? You know a lot about... Paying bills and writing out checks. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about Kellogg's. What was uh, it like? What, what was in the factory? Was it just like squashing bits of corn? It was pretty and boring, really. Just loads of conveyor belts. Um, yeah. Boxes of cornflakes everywhere. Just what you imagine. Yeah. I so was it more, this is where you it. might be working? <laughs> this is where you're likely to work? Possibly. If you leave there was two trips. There was that and the trip to Manchester Evening News. Okay. And I, I left that early because I had a job in... Um, Cordon Bleu. In Kellogg's. <laughs> Cordon Bleu, what's that? It's like that... a supermarket. Yeah? And I, I had to leave the trip early and the teacher went mad saying uh, they thought I'd got lost on the, you know, in the building and stuff. What, you didn't tell anyone? Or... No, because I w it was like day two of working in this supermarket and I couldn't be late. I thought by the time I explain where I've got to go and everything, it'll, I'll be even later. Sure. So I just left and then apparently they were searching the building and everything for me. How old were you? stuck in a printer. Um... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> in a printer! I don't know. Bro. What was the printer's name? <laughs> <laughs> you worked at a supermarket called Cordon Bleu. Yeah. Cordon that Bleu! Brilliant. Yeah. That's great, isn't it? It's rubbish. Oh. I got sacked. You had to what, what did you get sacked for? for? Messing about in a, um, the, back in the, in the car park around the back. Yeah. Right, there was, there was a grid and, uh, all the concrete had gone funny, so when it rains you got like a big lake. Oh yeah. Right? And I got in, do you know those big metal trolleys you get to like put all the food in while she's Oh out? yeah. And yeah. I got in one of them and pushed myself out into this lake. Of cement? No, of I water. it was full oh, of was water because right, it had been right, raining. Right. And I got stuck in the middle, right? And the boss was like, where's, where's Carl? He's meant to be doing, you know, facing up the beans. And I was like, <laughs> you were so, stranded in a lake. So someone said, oh, you, like, I saw him messing about out the back. He came out and saw me stuck in the middle of this. <laughs> <laughs> lake in like a, in a trolley and he said get back in I said, would you say no I'm, I'm, I'm said, filming sharks I said I'm, I'm, it's too deep I can't get out you'll have to pass me something and he said I'm not passing you nothing he said you can get out of there and walk through it I said I'm not I've got my trainers on probably the same yeah, ones yeah you've risked your life for them yeah I said I'm not getting these wet I said, I, I said what are you going to do I said I'm going to wait for the water to go down the grid he said the grid's blocked now get out or you're sacked I said well I'm not getting out He's right, you sacked. So, so you were sacked. How long did you have to wait for the water to go down the grid? In the end, I did get bored, and I sort of did a bit of a leap and a jump and got one foot wet. Uh, uh, how long were you waiting? Only about half an hour. <laughs> just think of it. <laughs> just think. I mean, how did he get himself into that situation? <laughs> That's fantastic. Should we play a record? Oh, definitely. Definitely. That's a joy. Oh, you're an absolute pleasure. More White Van Man next time on the show. Uh, Electric Soft Parade. I keep trying to get the album for free from you, Carl. You've not sorted me out yet. I have to rely on other people to give me uh, different copies. No, of I did try. Tracks. I'll keep trying. Please do. This is one called There's a Silence. Electric Soft Parade. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Gomez and Shot Shot on XFM 101.9. Uh, sorry, um, I was going to tell Steve something. Um, talk amongst yourselves. When you were out there, um, Johnny Mango phoned up and said to Carl, come on, when are we going to do this thing? And Carl got all nervous. Right, and uh, uh, he went, you don't want to do it, do you? He went, he said, well, I just, it's going to get out of hand. I just wanted to go as high as a tree. And uh, he went, well, you can. We just I'll hold you down with a rope. He went, yeah, but he said, but when the crowd are there and they're all screaming higher, <laughs> higher, I feel the pressure and I have to go along with it. <laughs> <laughs> what crowd? <laughs> <laughs> what crowd is this? Higher. No, higher. We don't live in a, like, a medieval era. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be dancing bears and tumbling midgets. Well, I don't know, oh, that's an well, idea. Hold on, uh, if there's anyone got any of those... Tumbling midgets would be amazing. Yeah. Definitely. Less balloons, cheaper to do. Oh, you're going no, up, you're going going up with them. No, you're going up with them. No, you're going up with not just, no. With a midget under either arm. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, it's time for your, uh, the re-education of Carl Pilkington. Uh, this week, Carl was studying uh, the life and times of Winston Churchill. Um, what did you make of it, Carl? What, 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 what did Churchill do for right, you? La well, last week I made a bit of an error with Hitler. Yeah, you Go didn't on, try to it. remember too much and it just, it was way too much for me. Sure. So what I've done this week, sort of flicked through, got a few of the basic facts. Yeah. And what I've learned, right, um, 
bit weird the way all these people have something in common that they're all a bit weird when the, when they're younger. Okay. They've got go on, some sort of illness. Was, go on. Well, you know, Rasputin, he, he wasn't well as a kid. Yeah. Che Guevara. Oh, was this is Rasputin, the mad monk, wasn't well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, che Guevara. Yeah. Um, asthma. Asthma, really bad asthma. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Hitler. He was Only a one bit, bit mental. Yeah. <laughs> Only one. His mother. He got was what, a bit mental. That could be libelous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, who've we done? And Churchill. Yeah. Um, very weak. There. Very weak child. Was he? Um, he only spoke to his dad four times in his whole lifetime. Really? Yeah. Didn't get on with his dad. Right. And I think one of the times when his dad spoke to him, it, he was having a go, saying um, he didn't do as well in the army as he wanted him to. Right. So that's that's pretty. Sad bit I picked yeah, up of yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway. So that spurred him on, anyway. Yeah. Um, I'm not going in all the ins and outs. Very, uh, very uh, important bloke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I, I, seriously. I mean, yeah. your dad bought the tapes, didn't he? Yes. And I can understand why, because he did. He did change a lot for us. You know what I mean? We won't be sat here now talking like this. Why? We could have been German. <laughs> yep. He didn't let that happen. No. Um, everyone had a go at him. Right when it when it when like uh, I think it was Chamberlain who was in power, yeah. and he was like saying, "Don't be trusting that Hitler." Yeah, you know, and everyone's like, "Look, stop causing trouble." Chamberlain sorted it out, you know, he sorted out a peace agreement. Yeah, and he was like, uh, "No, I don't trust him," and everyone's like, "Oh, you, you know, you're just causing trouble." You know, everyone else is happy. Then it turned out that Hitler mm. did actually do the dirty. Yeah, yeah and try and come over. And I remember he did, didn't he. Do some, he started a war. So there was a conflict he? of some kind. Yeah, yeah. Start, started a problem, mm. and uh, everyone went, "Hang on a minute!" That Churchill knew what he was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Get him back in charge. Sure. And they got him in, and uh, Hitler was scared of him because he knew that he wasn't going to be having any lies or anything. He couldn't try it on with, with, with Churchill. Yeah. And Especially uh, when he was a little bit pissed up and coked and with a was? big cigar. Churchill. He wasn't that. He wasn't doing that. I think I think a lot were in the, in the during the war, in the war cabinet. I think that. Uh, have things to keep him awake all night and stuff, and uh, yeah. he certainly liked a brandy. Rick, Winston Churchill was coked up, was he? <laughs> I mean, sorry, I just, I, this is something I wasn't aware of. If there are any historians uh, listening, if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm Was that very in the sorry. world at war? No, Winston I don't think Churchill so. Was any any, uh, any uh, uh, historians or uh, uh, um, you know experts on uh, on war? Um, did uh, did Churchill and not, not some of the uh, the other uh, people during uh, I think the First and Second World War? Uh, take a little bit so, of uh, so cocaine. Uh, so when it said that Hitler, doctors certainly used to Hitler like cakes. Would they be like the funny sort of cakes? No, they he probably did like a little bit of uh, Madeira cake. Right. Yeah, there's probably nothing. Like that. Sorry, carry on. So um, anyway, um, he beat the Bosch. Yeah, did all. Oh, that's steady on his personal life. Nothing to do with it. <laughs> and the, the most amazing <laughs> bit is right. He wasn't. He wasn't fit, and uh, he had a couple well, of. Well, he's a good-looking bloke in many ways. <laughs> Well, he, he, he had a couple of strokes, but he had a stroke on, say... He, we've know. had that. He <laughs> beat the Bosch. He likes to have a couple of strokes. Yeah. Let's not get into innuendo, Carl. <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> right, say he had, like, a stroke on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was he was up and fighting again on a Wednesday. Really? He was, he was a strong bloke. Yeah. And then he died at about the age of 86 or something. Good, he's a good lad, wasn't he? He was really good. Yeah, is, so he, is, he your, is, he the, is he the one you, you favour most of all? I'd the ones say out of all, I mean, Rasputin, I don't understand why he got, like I said, I don't know why they made a book on him. No. No. He just didn't deserve it. <laughs> no, no. Che Guevara, you know, he had his, he had his time, I suppose, and uh, yeah. did, a bit, did a bit good for certain people. Sure. Sort, yeah. Sorted Cuba out. Yeah. Doesn't really affect me. No. no. Uh, Hitler, I mean, enough said. Yeah. yeah. Bad bloke. Churchill, sorted <laughs> it all out. Yeah. And like I so said, your favourite out of the four of them, the, the, the of all those four, is Churchill. Churchill yeah. He's brilliant. Brilliant. I, 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 I agree. I agree with you. I think. What I love uh, <laughs> with with your kind of sort of summary of these people's incredible lives is the way that it's almost like I remember in Looking magazine. <laughs> I don't remember looking. It was the Junior yeah, TV Times. Looking. They used yeah. to have um, half a page, which was a comic strip, yeah. summarising someone's life. You might have, say, Five Star, the story of Five Star, yeah. and you'd have a picture. I always remember the Roger Moore one yeah. was a picture of like Roger's parents. It was like Roger Moore was born in 1930. Da, da, da. Picture of Roger's parents. Roger grew up during the war. Picture of Roger yeah. running down the street, right? Yeah. This is a school kid with a, a Spitfire coming behind him, like he was going to try and shoot him. Mr. Smith, surely. Exactly, uh, exactly, Mr. Smith. Yeah. R Roger uh, took up acting. Picture yeah. of Roger like acting. Yeah. Roger became James Bond. James Bond, Roger's now a popular, um, you know, star in his own right, and does a lot of work for charity. Brilliant. It summed up the whole thing in kind of. I think they pictures. used to have that in uh, uh, one of the TV Times or the yeah, Sun. I, I, I remember sort of when it was uh, Tina Turner, um, st uh, 
was it born Sarah May Bullock, uh, then it was Nutbush City Limits, stop hitting me, Ike. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're simply the best, <laughs> and that was it. It was great. <laughs> well, that's very much what the, uh, how your summary of, of great, great events is. But I'd say if you didn't know about Churchill, you've learned a bit today. So I thought so. Can, any, can people call in uh, to the, uh, the, well, the, yeah. all these, all these fellas want, taking uh, cocaine? Uh, I think I'm right. It's 0 800 1234. Give us a call, XFM 104.9. Did Winston Churchill and various other dignitaries take coke during the war? During the war, staying up for the war effort, but the emergency uh, summits and meetings, I, I, I think it was, I, I think it's been documented. I could be wrong. And let me tell you now, it's not happening today. Wow. Pete, you're on there. <laughs> <laughs> He's there, isn't he, to save me for Nancy. XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Fulton. I'm getting excited now because we've had loads of um, calls and emails, uh, uh, not only backing me up, but going a little bit further. Um, apparently, uh, uh, Johnny Mango called in again. He's, our, he's become our sort of official researcher on the, on this show. Um, that... Um, there is evidence that uh, Queen Victoria in Balmoral, with a young house guest, Winston Churchill, used to consume cocaine-filled lozenges. Mm -hmm. So, there you go. Also, uh, MDMA was a, a precursor of sort of ecstasy, a derivative, and uh, that was big in the day, giving soldiers, you know, a little um, pick-me-up. So, it's not so mad, is it? It sort Winston of makes Churchill sense, because he it? was into his speeches and that, and they say that coke gives you sort of... <laughs> you know, the balls to stand up and, and say, like... Not that that's a good thing. And no, it's not. No. Definitely not. No. Right? But it apparently it gives you, it gives you, it makes you confident, doesn't it? So you can stand up and say, you know, we're going to fight them on the beaches. Yeah. And all that. And, and sound yeah. like you mean it. It's exactly, yeah. When he was sort of like, you know, um, a little bit pissed up with his cigar on, coked off his tits, he wanted to fight. He didn't care where it was. He'd fight on a yeah. beach. He yeah. didn't care. He yeah. didn't care if he got sand in his new trainers. Exactly. He was boosted up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to fight? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's why he was coming hard. He was very much. You got to think of him as the Liam Gallagher of his day. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Are we oh. allowed to talk about this? I mean, I don't mean in terms of referencing drugs, but are we allowed? To, is this like libelous to Winston Churchill? We, one, or you can't him? libel the dead. Yeah, but Two, you, it's a, a is lot that of only it, in America? We're, we're, I'm asking, and I, we're, not, we're not saying, you know. To, to I think you'd pro probably going to do a fair, fair comment. Um, uh, three, we say we were joking. Yeah. Four, it's a satire. <laughs> yeah. Um, five, we love him. Five, we're not we're not condoning <laughs> drugs in any way. Six, um, this is Dermot O'Leary's show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't have a go at him anyway. That's what he's all right. <laughs> If there's any law against Rasputin, we might be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> law against Rasputin. Law against you Rasputin. did willfully Rasputin. <laughs> yeah. All over you the airways. You did slag off Russia's greatest love machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't shoot him till he was dead, did you? Oh. oh, put some poison into his I'll tell you wine. this, if there's any other historical questions that people want answered, then we're the men. Because really, with, with the three of us, our knowledge of the fact that the Hindenburg was filled with helium, <laughs> yeah, um, uh, <laughs> the, the kind of coke habits and various drug habits of, um, of Britain's most famous uh, political leader, yeah. we've got the answers to all of it. Einstein. Go on. I found out in the week that he, um, he didn't talk till he was six. See, it's all, it's all these people who are weird. Churchill couldn't read, could he, till he was about eight or nine? Really? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. He had uh, he got a D in history apparently, GCSE. Yeah. <laughs> Just one better. Mm. No, but um, Carl uh, called me in the week and he was a little bit stressed because he's had a couple of he's had a bad week now. He got stressed about Hitler and and Churchill. And I said, well, we're we're, we're chill out a little bit and we're, I'll teach him something a little bit um, cosier. And I said, oh, what about animals? No, you know, not frightening other mm. animals. You're interested in animals, aren't you? Yeah. You know, and. Um, and he went, oh, all right then, all right then. And then he went, okay, here's a question for you, Heather. So there's there's three animals without ears. He said, and I've told you one. <laughs> and I went, well, that's the snake, because he was talking about the snake. He went, I went, I went, hold on, Carl, there's loads of animals without ears. He went, there's not, there's three. I went, there's loads. I said, jellyfish, worms, or, um, single cell protozoa, peripherous. But he went, oh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Animals, proper animals. I went, they are animals. He went, no, proper animals. And I went, do you mean mammals? He went, what are you on about? I said, are, are these animals, are, are, have they got legs and are they fur bearing, right? And, and he went, one is. They've got legs. I went, I don't know, I give up. He went, right, the turtle. I went, right, yeah. And he went, 
and the bumblebee. <laughs> he said, that's the one with fur. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one with fur. <laughs> the one uh, What are you thinking? What is in your head, Carl? Which has got the most fur, a bee or a turtle? <laughs> it's not fur. What is it? Well, well it's... It's... You know, He's done you there, Jerry. It's pseudo hairs, isn't it? It's like a, it's a hair, it's a keratin thing. It's not like we have like mammals grow fur. Do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> He's not convinced. It, it, so when on, we say that, we, when we say like fur, we, 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 mammals are warm-blooded creatures. Yeah. Uh, often, usually percent, or as a few exceptions, right? That that give their milk to their young, nurture their young, and they have fur. Have you heard about osters? O osters? Um, oysters. <laughs> um. They, they're, one minute they're a man, then they're a woman, then they're a man again. <laughs> like Eddie Izzard. Now that's, that's libelous. <laughs> He's a transvestite, could I say. He's not a transsexual. Let's say that straight away. I'm retracting that. Right, go on then. Give us what? some more facts. Um, no, I've got you, um, Aesop's Fables. No, but you had some more facts you told me that were dead good. I just wondered if Steve knew them. What? What do you want to know? The ones that you read out to me. You had, um, you had one about a, uh, the spiky thing. Go on. Porcupine. Give yeah. me a clue. How many spikes has a porcupine got? Dunno. How many was it? I think it was about 10,000. But I, I, these aren't these aren't the most interesting facts, are they? It's alright. <laughs> it's alright though, isn't it? Yeah. And he went, but how can they say that? You could say that, uh, uh, you know, we've got a certain amount of hairs in our head. I went 10, 100,000 average. He went, yeah, but I haven't. So how do we know that that porcupine that they've counted is the same for all of them? <laughs> might have had alopecia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he might have been a particularly hairy one. You know what I mean? Right, you've got a, 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 do you know, do you know what a fable is? I tried to explain briefly. Do you, do you know what a fable I've is? I've got Carl? a rough idea. Okay, it, it's a thing that uses sort of uh, metaphor analogy just to, to, to explain sort of uh, 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 morals. I mean, they're, they're very, they're very, very old for a start. And it's all the. Um, I'll give you an example of one. Um, uh, oh, a quick one. Oh, the one about the the, um, the dog with two bones. Uh, he goes to a, a dog's got a bone. He sees its reflection in the lake, and he thinks, "Oh, that dog's got a nice bone. I love that." And as he goes to get that one in the reflection, he drops the one he's got, and that's one about you know. I think I was, with uh, your I was told one when I was younger. Go on. Uh, I think it was one. <laughs> this young lad. He's got a dog, right, and he sort of is about eight years old, and this dog, he's had it since he was about four, and it's a bit tired now, and he chucks sticks for it, and he doesn't, he doesn't go for it, and uh, he's saying to his mum, oh, I want a new dog, because this one's useless, it doesn't do what, you know, it doesn't have any fun with me, so they say, oh, no, but, you know, Rover's a good little dog, you should look after it, and he's like, oh, I don't like it, I want a new one, so they buy him a new puppy. And it's it's running around, yapping about, and he's loving it, and he's playing around with it in the grass. And then uh, one day he goes to the park, and he's messing about and rolling about with it, and he falls into the lake, mm. right? And the little puppy's, like, yapping at him, and he's going, help me, help me, the little, little dog's yapping. And then the old dog comes and gets his collar, and it pulls him out of the lake, and he goes, oh, God, you know, why did I forget about you? You're the better dog. And he loved that one again rather than the puppy. I got a feeling that was Lassie. <laughs> well, yeah, that was an episode of Lassie. What <laughs> well, was, the, what's the moral? Hoover. What's the moral there, Carl? What, what's that telling? What, what's that explaining through analogy? Sort of, don't forget the old. <laughs> Look after old people. <laughs> I remember there was one I heard once about a young boy who, who got trapped in a lake inside a, a, cage. a cage. But he, he, he loved his trainers so much. He loved his trainers so much he wasn't going to get them wet. And but the even though he had came, to get out there... And even though he thought that was the important thing because it's material value, he actually drowned and the trainers were no good to him then. I'll say that. Hives, I hate to say I told you so. Now I want to couple of, uh, clear a couple of things up. Um, obviously, me and Steve, we, we love Carl. This is not, this is, the things we give Carl to read and talk about, is not to embarrass him or stress him out at all. We genuinely like his view of the world. Yep. In fact, we did an interview yesterday with a bloke from the Standard who really liked the show and said, do, do you like Carl? Because you take the piss out of him a lot. And, um, you know, we, we just like to say, we love Carl. I said to that bloke, I said, it's like I've got a new kitten. I can't wait to get in and see his little face. On Saturdays, didn't I? Yes. And uh, uh, I think, 
I'm worried because I thought I'd give Carl something he was really get his teeth into with his Aesop fables. It involves animals and you know little stories. But I've given him a couple, and he doesn't seem to be that impressed or understand the the concept. It's just of what. Like you said you'd bring in an animal fact book as well, and I can't see that anywhere. No, <laughs> well you can only read one book at a time, can't well, you? Why didn't you bring the other one in first? Well, it's big. I've, I've got to work my way up to it. Sometimes I'll probably have to get a cab because it's a bit big. Now listen, I'll give, it, give this one. This is an easy one. Now just think, right? Think just what it means. They're not that. They're not that hidden. They're not that cryptic. Just think what this means, okay? Okay. When the hares addressed a public meeting and claimed that all should have fair shares, the lions answered, "A good speech, hairy feet." But it lacks claws and teeth, such as we have. How would you use that? No. What, what do you think that means? This is this this translated from the I don't know uh, Greek or something. I don't know. It was it was Aesop. Where's he from? Greek. Yeah. So it you know it, it should I should I do it in my own language? Okay. Um. So what what would happen if there's 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 hares and they have a meeting in the jungle with like loads of lions and go hey hold on wait a minute I think we should all be equal and share everything all right and the lions go well yeah it's easy for you to say we've got claws and teeth yeah what does that mean? It's saying like uh, course the hares want that because it's better for them the lions get nothing out of it because they're already king of the jungle. That's right. So it's ne it's ne it's negotiating from weakness. Anyone can negotiate from strength, but negotiating from weakness is your. It's it's you know it's it'd be lovely. It's a lovely utopian look at the animal kingdom. But the way you said it is better than the way they worded it. <laughs> well, that's uh, because but that's because uh, Ricky's very much the modern Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, many people have thought that. You know, that's why he's getting a lot of awards with the TV show. <laughs> For him, Thank that's, you. that's a favourite. So look, AR, take that home, and read ones you like, and tell me about the ones you like, ones that click. I don't care if you only come in with like one or two, go, I'll tell you what, Rick, that's a mate, that there's one thing that I've learnt from that. You know, because sometimes you can know all these phrases, and until something happens, you don't, you don't think, you know, you, everyone's heard, you know, to, um, I don't know, to err is human, to forgive divine. But, and then some, uh, you know, might happen, do you go, oh, that, that's what that means, that's amazing. So, you know. Do you know any Steve I found? <gasps> Wait, what's that? A fable. Uh, well, I would imagine that the most famous one I've always remembered is the, uh, you know, the, the lion with the, uh, the thing in its hoof. Do you remember that? Paw. The, the lion, yeah, with, the, with the, the, the spike in its paw, and a smaller animal gets it out for it, but it still attacks it anyway. Well, that's life, isn't it? <laughs> well, I read one the other day, actually, which was very interesting. It was one that uh, the famous film director Orson Welles said. Oh, yeah. Which he said, uh, apparently there was a, a, a bear going across uh, a lake wading through the lake, and a scorpion said, um, well, let me go on your back, will you? Come on, just let me go on your back, we'll go across, it'll be brilliant. He goes, well, no, you'll just sting me. He goes, don't be stupid, if I sting you, you'll die, and we'll both drown. And he goes, oh, fair enough. Who, who was doing the stinging? The scorpion. The scorpion. Right, okay. Yeah. And the bear's wading through the water. Yeah. So mm. the scorpion jumps on the back, and they wade through the water, and halfway across, the scorpion stings the bear. And the bear goes, well, we're both going to die now. He goes, yeah, it's my nature. I thought he was going to say, I can swim. <laughs> 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 ah, oh, you're the best. What's, what's the one about? Um, do, does that mean anything to you? It's my nature. I, you know, that's in that's, my nature. That's the way it is. That's that's what I do. Yeah, I'm a scorpion. Yeah, one of my favourite ones. These, these don't mean anything to you, do they? I mean, what I'm saying is you're not impressed by them. They're all right. What about this? What about this one? Don't trust bears. Here's one. Here's one of my favourite. <laughs> what? Don't, he said, well, why not just say don't trust bears? <laughs> the, bear, the bear's the one that was too trustworthy. Don't trust scorpions. Yeah. Right, here's one of my favourite ones of all time, okay? Um, uh, a lion is dying, he's an old lion, he's in the front of his cave, and all the animals come around, like the foxes and the hyenas and, and, the, and the, uh, the rabbits, and they're all taking the piss out of him, and they're laughing at him, and they're laughing and going, you can't fight us now, kind of, and just before he dies, he goes, fine, but I was a lion once. Uh, what does that mean? I don't know. Well, he's saying it's better to have lived and had what I had because I was I was great if only for a, a short time and you lot are still alive but pff, you're nothing you're, mm. you're rabbits and hares I was a lion once so you know I'm are they happy. always using animals for these stories <laughs> well yeah I could I could change it to refrigerators and household appliances if it would make it help but animals you know uh, <laughs> I remember the one about being ill a lot, and you say something about, um... Go on. Uh, you know, 
if you keep doing that, if you keep having time off, I won't believe you. That's the boy who cried wolf. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Do you know yeah, that? Have you heard the I'm famous one? Well, this is probably the most powerful one. When you're pulling a face, and they say, "Well, if you keep doing that, the wind changes." I've heard that. Because like that. yeah. yeah. you know that's, that's scientifically proven. That is. That can happen. That can happen. Should we yeah. have hip hop hooray? Yeah. Are you queued up for that? No, but go on. You. Uh, Carl, sort it out, mate. I was gonna. No, come on. This is what I asked you to play, mate. If you've not, you know, you're getting too big for your boots now with your showbiz lifestyle. You're not paying yeah. attention, are you? You're not playing yeah. the record if you want you to play. Heat magazine's favourite. Yeah. Okay, so um. I've oh, you dropped, dropped that. You've been very you know, that's clumsy. Oh. You know, you're, uh, you know, with the big I can't you're believe you're not in... Oh, Fables are great. He's not impressed, is he, really? No, I am. I, I mean, you know, once I get to take this book home tonight and that, and yeah. have, a, have a read, I might, I might change my mind on them next week. Yeah, you're coming all stressed. I'm not, I'm not impressed with the ones you've you've been talking about, I must admit. Okay. Okay. Okay, th sure. this album is by this group Nerd, who are big uh, hip-hop and R&B oh, producers so in the States. Yeah. We've played a track from them in the past, Bobby James. This album's been re-recorded, I don't know why exactly, with live instruments. You don't get many R&B and hip-hop records now with live instruments, so it's pretty... It's, it's all it's computers, isn't it, Steve, <laughs> these <laughs> days, and drum machines. And uh, there is a forthcoming single, I suspect it might be this track, Rockstar. I'm not going to play that, I'm going to play a uh, track two, Things Are Gonna Get Better. order here to stay sadly we're not here to stay steve we've only got about two more minutes that's true enough yeah well i think that's just time for some uh, interesting facts that uh, johnny mango our researcher from uh, losecontrol.com has uh, emailed us a few uh, familiar ones favorite ones of yours i think Go um on. any ones i don't know though i don't i think you know this one don't you a pig's orgasm lasts for 30 minutes i know and uh, a pig can't actually look directly up wouldn't it thought so directly after up. 30 minutes of coming <laughs> no, absolutely <laughs> Um, Daddy, be careful here. That's incredible. Remember what happened to Tom Bins? Go on. Humans and dolphins are the only species that have sex for pleasure. Uh, bonobos do as well, they've rediscovered. Was which it is it? Which is a, uh... Bonobo? Uh, yeah, um, a, 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 a chimpanzee, like a chimpanzee. Right. So, yeah. So it's three now. Can't believe dolphins are getting... They're three, they're all, they're all at it now. <laughs> dolphins get <getting more. laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, polar bears are left-handed. Yeah. It's it's yeah. I yeah. don't quite know how they work that out. Did they give them spelling tests? Or uh, lighting tests. Oh yeah, they probably just do it. Do it. It's probably the paw they use to hide up the, the black nose during a hunt. Of course, yeah. of course. Um, some lions mate over fifty times a day. Yeah, not not every day of the year. Okay, they don't do that every day. No. Okay, because no. again, I'm worried. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> start, I'm, you know, I didn't think that dolphins. What day of the year do you do it fifty times? What, <laughs> is it? It's coming up to it. It's April, isn't it? You'd <laughs> like to get out of there. I have a special day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe we could we could coincide that with the uh, balloon event. <laughs> It'll just me, be me quietly humping in the corner. <laughs> Volunteers, welcome to email now, you know. Um, <laughs> and it, all, all the proceeds go to charity. If you are a desperate lioness. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, butterflies taste with their feet. I didn't know that. Interesting. I didn't know that. That is interesting. But they don't eat much, do they? Because they only live a day. Good point. They wouldn't need to eat. Um, an ostrich's eye is bigger than its brain. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. That's yeah. extraordinary. That is, yeah. Uh, yeah. and the, uh... Yeah. But Carl, how big are your eyes? <laughs> Finally, I think we've discussed this before, haven't we? A cockroach will live nine days without its head yeah. before it starves to death. Yeah, that's only because it can't get water and food yet. It would, it would be quite happy going around doing its normal things. Yeah. I mean, Probably if, to work. if you're just as good without your head as with your head... May as well not have a head. I just... I don't see the point. Well, that was uh, thanks to Johnny Mangler there of... Uh, what's his website called? Uh, it was turned into a sort of... Uh, volunteered uh, uh, researcher. Yeah. He's very fast. Losecontrol.com. Can I just say as well, we've had lots of emails from different people just uh, saying they enjoy the show and offering little tidbits and things. Uh, Nick Wilson, Sarah and Lauren, Ken, Dan, Jane, she wanted some Ash, we didn't play Ash, never mind. Oh. Lee, Jez, Derry, there's loads of people there. Well, I'm gonna, uh, again, we were talking earlier about, you know, you not caring about being like a, a geek or a freak oh, or right, not trendy. Not. No, I'm just saying. I am trendy, I am. And I know, yeah. And uh, I'm going to play a bit of an easy listening. I apologise to those people who still tune in expect to um, hear two hours of new metal or gorillas. Um, and this is a uh, very old-fashioned, lovely tune. It's bread. I hope you enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, bread. bread. <laughs> <laughs> 